If I said to you the words bandwidth, latency, throughput, and connection, what do you think of? If you said networking, you are right. And in this episode, we're going to be completing the planning of our architecture design from the AZ-140 study guide by helping you with your network capacity planning for Windows Virtual Desktop. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Now, network capacity is defined as the amount of traffic that a network can handle at any given time. So in the case of WVD, there are multiple networks that are involved. So we're going to need to VLAN this discussion. There are three different networks and two services that we're going to talk about today in the area of WV capacity. So let's first just take 30 seconds so we're all on the same page with how WVD works. WVD uses something called Reverse Connect that allows your clients to connect over the public internet to the WVD service securely without the need of public IP addresses in Azure. Everything starts with the client authenticating to Azure Active Directory, and that's great because that means all the normal rules of Azure AD authentication apply, including conditional access and multi-factor authentication. Once your sign-in is complete, you'll receive an Azure AD token, just like any other workload. And then when you go to connect to the service in your client, that token gets passed to the web access role inside the WVD service, which will then present you with a list of remote applications and desktops that you are allowed to use. When you click on one of those icons to open that app or desktop, the token will be presented again to to the service at the WVD gateway. That will then make a certificate for you and pass that onto your local system. And the gateway service will contact the host pool, find whatever session host is currently available for that workload and make an outbound connection back to your client. With the connection complete, your remote application or desktop will open and you can get to work. So let's talk about where the clients come from and we have three networks to consider. First is the internet. Then you may also have a point-to-site network or a client-based VPN. The third kind of network that's involved is your on-premise network, and that would be connected to Azure by a virtual WAN or an SD-WAN solution, site-to-site -site VPN, or an Azure Express route. Now, as I'm sure you know, the internet is the world's largest computer network, but I'm sure that you also know that the laws of physics don't change, right? So the further away your client is from your destination, the longer it takes to get there. If you had a client anywhere in the world and you wanted to get to a website, say that's in the US, and any one of these clients that are anywhere here in the world would have to travel over the internet, all the networks and routers and switches and all of that, in order to finally get to the destination of the web server, and then the data has to travel all the way back in order to present you with the web page on your computer. And the further that you have to go means the longer it takes and the more chances that something could go wrong. So the issue in this case is not only the distance, but also the inefficiency and unpredictability of the path because you're going over the internet and anything can happen anywhere in the world that makes a problem for your traffic. But also remember the more hops, which is the different locations your traffic has to go through to get to its destination, means that there's more processing involved, which adds latency. So what if we could make the path shorter, more direct, or more efficient? That's why the WVD service is set up with points of presence all over the world, so that no matter where your client is, you should be relatively close to a WVD entry point. Now, once your data goes into that entry point, you're now on the Azure network which is much smaller than the global internet. So routing can be much more finely controlled, it can be more efficient, and there's less hops to get to your destination. And all of those connections over the internet are secured and encrypted, and don't forget about the reverse connection model. There is no inbound access into this environment apart from the WVD service. Now, of course, you've got people who are working from home or at a coffee shop or some kind of remote office location somewhere, and they may be using a client-based VPN, also known as a point-to-site VPN. And that's great, and WVD works in that scenario, but there are some things to think about. And first is latency. A VPN is encrypted, which means the data comes into the tunnel, it has to be encrypted, comes out the other end, it has to be decrypted. So that adds extra processing and therefore 
latency. Now it does also add security, so that could be a good thing. But remember that Reverse Connect is encrypted as well. Makes that experience seem slower just because of all of those extra hops. So finally, there's the corporate network scenario, and that's where you have users in an office where they're connected by a site-to-site -site VPN or express route. And this can also be a good experience. It depends where the users are and where your session hosts are. So let's assume that you're a global company and you have users that are in France and your connection from your local data centers into Azure is only in the US. So the user in France get connected back to your data center, then from there go up a VPN or express route into Azure, and then they have to connect to their virtual machines. And if those virtual machines are located in France, now they have to go all the way back across the Azure backbone to get to the France region so that they can connect and you end up with this big circle worth of connectivity. And that is certainly not the most optimal path. So it would be much better if in France, they had a VPN or express route going right to Azure where the VMs are. Okay, so laws of physics don't change. The shortest path possible with the least amount of hops gives you the most predictable results. And we need to keep an eye on latency. Just to finish this section out and to be clear, there's nothing wrong with any of these approaches. Internet, client VPN, site-to-site -site VPN, they will all work. It's just a matter of understanding the requirements and what the users are doing. So now let's switch gears slightly and talk about network performance and your workloads and how we can solve all the problems I just talked about. Now, how do we figure out latency? Let's say you're in a work from home scenario. You have a bunch of users who are in a bunch of different locations all around the world and you want to figure out where best to put your session host so that they can have the lowest latency experience. Well, down in the video description, I have a resources section that has multiple links for documentation that I'm going to talk about that's going to address these issues. And one of them down there is the WVD Experience Estimator. When you go to the web page, it's going to calculate all of the different Azure regions latency from where you are. So you can see for me, the East US regions are the closest, so they have the lowest latency. So from my perspective, if my company is located in East US, I'd wanna put my session host in the East US region so my users can get the best experience. Now that doesn't mean that you can't use something like West US, even though the latency is higher. You certainly can, especially in a disaster recovery scenario. But now you have to ask yourself the question, what are the requirements of DR? Do I have to have the exact same performance in DR as I do in prod? Well, if so, then going East US to West US may not provide the best experience. Maybe you need to look at East US too or South Central US. So keep that in mind and remember these are round trip numbers. And just to repeat myself, the session hosts and the users should be as close as possible. And while I'm at it, I'll also throw in there your domain controllers because remember authentication is the first piece of the puzzle. So if your domain controllers are not in Azure and they're somewhere on the other side of the world, you are going to have a very long logon time. And probably a lot of your other sub subsequent requests that have to hit your domain controller for authentication are going to make everything slower. So keep all your resources as close as possible to keep latency low. So let's dig a little bit deeper and talk about the kinds of workloads and the network requirements. Then I've got a link down in the description for a network guidelines doc. And in there, we've got a table for recommended bandwidth for certain workload types. Now we covered what those workload types are and what they mean in our last episode. So if you missed that, go back and check that one out. And something to keep in mind with these workload types is your display resolution. And that just makes sense. If you're transmitting video data at 720p, you have far less network requirements than if you're doing it at 4K. But this also means for all of you work from home veterans that video conferencing will have a big impact. And that's why WVD supports teams with AV redirection, but that's another episode. So be sure that you're subscribed and you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out. Now I've got another link in the video description for bandwidth requirements to help you break down all the different kinds of data from graphics data to heartbeats, file transfers, and more. And what's really nice here is you don't really have to worry about any of this and manage it. You just need to be aware of it in your network planning because RDP is a protocol that's designed to adjust to these things on the fly. But thinking about the RDP protocol, I have a second service connection type to talk to you about, and this is our last thing for this episode, and that is an even more direct way to connect to WVD by something called 
RDP short path. Now, as I'm recording this video, this feature is in preview, but if you remember all the way back to episode zero, I said when we looked at the skill sheet that commonly used preview features may appear on the test. Now, I do have a whole video digging deep on RDP short path that you can go check out up here. So we're just gonna do a high level. Now, if you think back to that reverse connect that we talked about earlier, after your authentication process was finished, you got your list of applications from the WVD service. And then you had to go through the handing the token to the gateway to get the session host to make an outbound connection to your client. And RDP short path steps in right there and allows you to connect more directly and efficiently. See, the RDP protocol is TCP based, whereas RDP short path is UDP based which runs much more efficiently. There's less handshaking, less chatter going on, and that really helps for this type of traffic. So when you are on a local network, that's that third type that we talked about, direct connect on the corporate network, site-to-site -site VPN, express route connection, that kind of thing, you'd be able to configure your host to accept connections directly from your client. So the client sitting in the office would make a connection to WVD, and they would authenticate, get their token, get their list of applications. They go to open an app, their client machine would connect directly over your express route to the session host over the UDP protocol. And all of this is still secured with certificates and TLS. Whoa, so we've got five videos, three networks, and two connection models under your belt, and you should be able to successfully design a WVD architecture based on somebody's requirements. So click here if you want to dive deeper on RDP short path with me, or you can click down here for the next episode in the AZ140 study guide. And we're going to talk about designing our user identities and profiles. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in that next episode. Happy learning.